Die in London. Hello. Just checking the date. August. No, not August. October the 5th. October the 5th. And autumn has arrived in London, UK. My vid video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. Well, both. My addictive substance, alcohol. So, an alcoholic in recovery, one day at a time. And behaviour around people, places, and things thinking I knew and wanted to be with the right people, with the right, in the right place, with the right things, doing the right things, always trying to fit in and not show weakness or less than feelings. And often that was the case for me. I didn't feel right about me. But a few drinks and life changed. I suppressed the fear, put on a brave face and if I felt shameful or guilty about not being good enough, my ego covered it up. So I think my secrets kept me stuck in the malady of drink, because drink fixed everything. It was my best friend for a long time, and helped me do things which maybe I ought not to have done, or ha would have done differently had I been in my right mind, knowing it was okay to have freedom to choose and to pursue freedom to choose, always in all matters, but simply in the day rather than trying to become something tomorrow so that you would admire me tomorrow when I've got my act together. Better to be in reality today, not pretending. So I've learned a lot in how to live life in the last few years without a drink inside me, which changed the way I felt about everything and made possible oblivion when life was tough and really unpalatable so it's taken a while to find how to stay sober no amount of effort on my part seemed to work self-will willpower failed me and if I couldn't do it how could people help me get sober that was the big question family friends didn't understand what it was that was wrong with me or the malady of the addiction, the allergy to alcohol. Because it is an allergy. If it had been a nut allergy, I'd have given up nuts. If it had been a, a fruit allergy of some sort, I'd have given up whatever it was. If I was allergic to wheat, then I would give up wheat, stop eating bread. And I think I probably should do that. And it's also just learning all about the different foods I need to be careful around. Because in recovery, a few years in, I got onset of type 1 diabetes, a chronic condition which doesn't keep, doesn't get better and it can get worse and in some ways it has. So I, de I deal with uh, chronic pain and fatigue as best I can. So life is what it is and I'm very pleased that I can live in the moment of now and understand what is going on around me. So I'm a bit quicker, a bit sharper than ever before, but not looking to gain the advantage, just seeing how I fit in, uh, where I want or need to be included, and if it's possible, and build the stepping stones today to whatever future I may have. So, living in reality, rocketed into, into the fourth dimension, the fourth dimension being time, and a friend of mine said, there are so many dimensions, it's untrue. Well, it is true. There are so many dimensions beyond the four that we can perceive. And I don't even know what they are. But he does, because that's his interest as a scientist. And I'm just simply me. So my video is all about recovery. And what helped me. So family and friends and medical people did help me make it possible for a rock bottom where I got a moment of clarity. Having got to a point where oblivion was preferred because life was so horrible, I had a moment of clarity which, which was, I cannot do this on my own, so I needed help. And then a professional person said, how about going into a, a drying out clinic for three weeks and see where we go from there? Well, that was the starting point of asking for help. And that help was very positive and helpful. It was short-lived. And I did go back to drinking because I didn't get enough of the message about where I could get help on a daily basis. 
and not being a joiner of anything, never wanting to be included in that way, always almost like a, somebody who hopped from different environments because that was the way I operated. Come in, make some impact, and go away. And I had a lot, of, a lot of career time doing that. So I've learned a whole new way of life to be in a fellowship, and that fellowship is AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. And the good news is we're all the same in one way: a desire to be sober. That's the only entry qualification, if you like. And there are no rules or laws or regulations burdening you down. You don't have to bend yourself to fit in. You can just be yourself and listen to what's going on around you in meetings. So uh, alien concept being included in this fellowship and it was asking me whether I not wanted to give up drink and get back to sober which is where I started. So it was a difficult transition to say okay I'll give it a go and the first few meetings were alien, definitely alien to me. I didn't like this idea of joining in. So it took a while to actually get to a place where I could say, OK, I'm going to give it a go and go to meetings of fellowship as often as I need to, to keep sober. And in my early days, that was every day. Because the in London, UK, where I live, alcohol is freely available almost on every street corner. There's no way to avoid it, and you can order it in online on, on your computer. So anybody in the malady knows just how easy it is to get shut in and stay away from everything until the whole pack of cards or the house of cards collapses. So I talk a lot about AA. I don't represent it. It's full of unique, authentic people who share about their sobriety as they will and how they how they will wherever it happens to be so it's a personal choice but the most important thing is I don't represent people in AA everybody is equal size so I never never make reference in a particular way about somebody else or name them anonymity for me is sacrosanct it, it's what enables us to find out the truth of who we are and then we can share it generally in whatever life walk of life we have. So I'm going to share the AA preamble and a reading which um, illustrates what's going on with fellowship. This book, Daily Reflections, <coughs> it covers the 12 step program for a, a person to find well-being and sobriety and get freedom of choice back. The 12 step program is all about being open, honest and willing to keep on changing as life changes. And inside it also covers the 12 traditions. And the 12 traditions are about how the fellowship keeps safe in unity, service and recovery. So for individuals it's about being open, honest and willing and in fellowship it's about uni unity, service and recovery and reminding ourselves always there are no leaders to tell us what to do and I can't tell you what to do maybe you hear something which is helpful which gets you to a meeting where you hear the wisdom of many people and what I know more than anything it took the, the voices or the wisdom of many sharing their experience, strength and hope in meetings the many make the difference. Hanging on to one person won't work. We probably tried it outside fellowship. If we had a partner, then she or he uh, would see the problem. And I remember very clearly uh, the girl I loved most in one particular era of my life said, you know, if you're going to drink that late into the evening, you better make sure you've got a packet of mints handy in the morning to get the smell of alcohol off you. But the trouble was, I drank late into the evening, got up early, and then went to the gym for years on end to try and sweat it out. And the amount of oblivion time was not really that long enough to recover from one day to the next. So people knew around me that drink was probably too, too much, and I was dependent. But I was ignorant for a long time, until I got to AA, and they made it clear. Give up drink and life will get better. But how to do that? It took 
time, effort and pain to overcome the physical compulsion to keep on drinking because the body wanted it and my mind emotionally needed to blot out the horror that my life became from successful to the park bench as many of us have found but you don't have to get to the park bench to actually keep sober if you can catch it early enough your life is open and the choices are more open to you if you have a clear head because you can say no a definite no to those things which will not work in your life and you can have a positive yes to those things which will work in your life anyway something of the fellowship I will share the AA preamble on this little card here you can't see it too well sorry about that my lighting must be a bit out <coughs> I'll read, it, read out the AA preamble and then share the day of reflection from the book and then some words which I've picked up over the years. So, the AA preamble. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others, help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for member, membership is a desire to stop drinking. So that's it, a desire to stop. You, you may not have stopped yet, or you may be drunk in your first few meetings, or you may come in, have a look, go away, and come back several years later. Not recommended, because that's what I did, because it was just such a nasty shock, I went straight to the pub. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. And the good news was, I actually lived off the biscuits in AA for a while because I was below subsistence level in terms of getting help and I had no resentments about that I just wished I hadn't put some of the money which was for food into the pot AA will survive come what may but it won't, only has a prudent reserve of money just in case uh, money becomes an issue so we don't take money or contributions from outside we are self-supporting through our own contributions if you haven't got the money, you don't put it in. If you haven't got enough to live on, you don't put in because ego says, I don't want to show up as poor. Because we are poor emotionally when we get to AA. Actually having nothing is a great advantage in the end because if we're empty, we can fill up with good things rather than bad things. Yes, carrying on, AA is not allied with any set denomination, politics, organisation or institution, does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. So the fellowship is there for one thing, and it has a primary purpose, and it's not interested, it's not grounded in any affiliation to anything else, not even me in my videos, I'm sure my videos may upset some people, because they will see it as a a misunderstanding of the traditions of the fellowship but we need to get a message out there that there is a there is a solution to our problems today London's waking up yes it's quite early in the morning here just daybreak has just happened so you can belong to anything and still come to fellowship and the fellowship is not there to change your belief system or say cut off those causes which are important to you it's got nothing to do with outside anything it's just there for sobriety and it says quite clearly, clearly in this preamble you may hear at every meeting our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety so we work together around that primary purpose and the primary purpose means that we're not trying to push our own ways on other people and if we do impose or try and impose our ways on other people they will most likely and quite rightly reject anything from us and they'll find someone else to talk to and to share with about what's going on for them and eventually we get to these 12 steps how to be open honest and willing and October is all about step 10 which is making a spot check inventory and in what's going on and how are we coping with it so rather than reacting to situations which disturb us responding to situations which disturb us and the beauty of step 10 is it's about making sure our side of the street is clean 
it's not about judging the other side of, of what is going on or what's impacting on us we can only work with what we have and that's ourselves and if we make free choices in times of trouble or times of happiness we are probably likely to be more serene and peaceful with the outcome because we're not trying to change people, places and things because actually we are quite powerless over them we may influence them with words but it won't actually change them they change themselves as much as we change ourselves in sobriety so today's AA daily reflection very simply yesterday's baggage and uh, this is very true of me for the wise have always known that no one can make much of his life until self-searching becomes a regular habit that's in these spot check inventories until he is able to admit and accept what he, what he finds and until he patiently and persistently tries to correct what is wrong and that comes from the 12 steps and 12 traditions book which is the below the telephone the second one in the purple cover it was quite a, that's quite a big copy it's got big, big writing for this person who's having trouble with his eyesight and it goes on to say I have more than enough to handle today without dragging along yesterday's baggage too I must balance today's books if I am to have a chance tomorrow so we empty out the baggage on a daily basis it's like a bit like being a dustbin man we throw out the garbage daily if I am to have a chance tomorrow so I ask myself have I erred or made mistakes and how can I avoid repeating that particular behaviour did I hurt anyone did I help anyone and why so we get the balance of inventory spot check what's gone well and have gratitude for it and what may have gone awry wrong and what can we do about it so we don't do the same thing over and over again starting with tomorrow some of today is bound to spill over into tomorrow but most of it need not if I am an honest daily if I take an honest or make an honest daily inventory that's the big that's the big truck going past which normally picks up the bottles but the bottles were rattling all night I had a very bad night's sleep I had the window open, wind blowing through which is quite nice but it was quite a good temperature but the uh, dustbin men who pick up all the bottles from the restaurants around where I live because it's a very busy area here in London, Chelsea and <laughs> they kept me awake I watched quite a lot of TV news which was very interesting but uh, nothing about sobriety I think the good news is uh, I don't mind insomnia I just deal with it as it happens so I don't think that I have to sleep my way into serenity sleep will come when it wants and when I feel tired enough now for today have I a gratitude list for today I wake up and wonder how it is I am alive and well, that's true because where I got to uh, hospital visits and intensive care trying to work out what had caused the bleeding from every, or every orifice just about in me but I'm alive and I feel pain and it's okay and familiar, familiar physically I nearly busted my ankle again it was a very severe sprain but what they did do was x-ray the foot where I'd broken many bones last year just by getting tripping on a sidewalk <laughs> which put me out of action for nearly a year in terms of getting about on my own it was quite difficult and then I thought I'd done the same thing a couple or three weeks ago but I went for the x-ray and it turned out to be just just black bruising and my toes still slightly swollen and bruised so I'm healing which is good but the, the pain I feel physically most days is diabetic neuropathy where the nerve endings are and the sleeves around the nerves are not so good so sometimes it's extraordinarily painful and I can't walk at all or some days I just get to walk a little bit and sometimes I don't feel anything either so it's intermittent and difficult every single day but I live with it because it's familiar so to an extent it doesn't stop me getting about unless I just start walking and it, I just stop <laughs> anyway I feel right sized emotionally and coping in the moment of now 
spot check inventory always handy and available today when I respond rather than react so if I can respond to a situation which is hold on long enough to think oh what's what's making me feel I feel right or wrong about this situation why and normally it's about me and my attitudes but if someone else is out there digging up uh, everybody's ha happiness with a great big digger and, a, and unearthing pain better to make a retreat unless there is reason and it's dangerous then you find people who can do deal with it with it for you or with you but check it out with people you don't have to do it all alone and you don't have to be the arbiter the judge of life for other people and the worst thing of these steps of AA is it makes us able to judge others harshly when they're being bad and um, what I often say about that even at the in the moment people can be the best they can be and when they, they, their behaviour is the worst in that moment when they're really awful in that moment it's the best they can be based on what's going on for them and often it's the tra tragedy of life the baggage that we carry around which we bring into the moment of now so if something start, kicks off people react in a particular way because that's what they've learned and that's the best they can be but we don't have to follow them and we have the freedom to choose not to and to find a different path for ourselves so we respond if we can sometimes reaction is absolutely necessary to avoid a bus or a taxi or a big lorry or simply make sure we are on the sidewalk and not pavement and not on the road something I wrote this morning and it was I shared it with a person on Facebook I'm always taken with the sharing and, and honesty we find in recovery into reality into the moment of now and hoping that as we prospect this new day truth love and wisdom prevails and that's my higher power for me truth love and wisdom I aspire to know the truth by listening learning and all my senses working and being sober uh, truth, love and wisdom. Love is about loving other people without conditions, how to love and be loved back. And the wisdom is what I'm learning. So if God is truth, love and wisdom, that's how it works for me. I need a higher power in my life to consult with in terms of good conscience. And also the consultation process which goes on with my fellows in the fellowship helps me every day. So truth, love and wisdom is incoming it's not already in me all I have is opinion and belief so again I stress it's the many voices in AA which make the difference not just one voice one voice is never enough it only has one point of view the person who is speaking so in previous years self preservation automatic responses to similar situations old baggage can be a real nuisance most people who remind us of how we were back then as we point the finger at them or give them the finger yes gestures usually some fingers are pointing back to us at our own at our own hands drive carefully with any wisdom today so when you stick a finger out at people you've got three pointing back at you so the the idea is you may have a judgment on other people because you're more able to but this, it's about what we do as people, as human beings, how we get on with it, how we forgive people daily for what they do because it's the best they can be. And baggage of a lifetime, we need to be careful sifting through our personal inventories of attitudes and behaviours and stored wisdom. Just because it worked back then doesn't mean it's going to work now. Just because we had great times back then doesn't mean it's going to be great times right now and the world is teetering on the brink of economic catastrophe because those who have money are holding on to it and won't lend it and those who need to borrow to keep things going can't afford the interest rates which are coming up in different countries around the world so we have to be careful around how we deal with ourselves we might feel able to let go what no longer works it is never too far away and can kick off with the right ingredients today namely people places and things vigilance and humor is good today 
we need to keep our he- sense of humour or we get intolerant hateful and horrible and worst of all with the steps process we can really damage and hurt people because we have done our own personal inventory our life story what works and doesn't work and we've unpicked and unstitched a lot of the the harm done to ourselves but also we have the baggage of anger and resentment and how to kick that off in other people uh, a head full of memories some useful and some we might wish to forget some say they have lost decades to alcoholism and addiction memories are thin at best or nightmares at worst and I hear that from pop stars where they've been indulging in all sorts of substances for years on end and they can't remember what went on but whatever did go on is always on the face of the person who is getting into recovery it starts with unimaginable pain and then somehow gets to get to a place of serenity wherever is going on today I, I hope to cherish and in a, world dif- in a difficult world learning is always now humility to keep learning to have compassion and passion to be loved and be loved and useful peeling back the veneer the hotbed of reality can do, cannot do and wisdom in the moment of now the hotbed of reality where did that come from? well reality is a hotbed always, it just is and the can do, can't do wisdom in the moment of now what I can do, change me and my attitudes what I probably can't do is change you and your attitudes I may, may influence them a bit so we get through whatever that struggle might be today is all about baggage in the daily reflections yes not keep carrying our baggage into now all the old attitudes and behaviour all the suspicions and hatefulness that was there old ways of living and old ways of responding to success failure or simply days we felt had nothing much in them can keep coming back to haunt us we need to remind ourselves we were always there in those days back then and back then has a lot of wisdom which still works today so we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater or the alcohol, we're just shedding the alcohol so we can get back to new, new beginnings we may be reborn developing new ways to live and we need to keep hold on wisdom which works I was an, this is me about the past I was a driven individual in my drinking days and in many ways still feel driven today by feelings the motives of these days are different olden days were full of fear feeling it was not too cool it was not cool to have fear as a companion and pushing it away show no fear, face up brave face and fight rather than flight somehow all my feelings became merged under a thin veneer of ego propped up by feelings pushed down and a notion of attitudes and behaviour and alcohol to take the sting off anything so I was just like trying to be a warrior but where was I blinking well heading it turned out to be into obscurity and a part bench where I just couldn't stand myself let alone anybody else the edge was taken off certainly and when feelings came through the good ones love, faith, courage and esteem they were welcome but without the counterbalance or, or the downside there were no real measures for me it was black and white and no real colour peace and happiness were a blur as the next right thing to do with work and home life finding love and finding the next collectible experience I missed the point completely because all I knew was success or bleak failure covered over in the oblivion oblivion of fixing myself in my dislocated world so I really wasn't in the world I was was like a puppeteer with this person in front of me me intellectually thinking my way through everything if I go there I was like a chess player but life I guess life is like chess but if you play with emotion with your feelings first so you're influencing what you're thinking feelings do come first so if you're fearful you shut the door and lock it if you're not so fearful you open the door and find out there's a very pleasant person outside who's maybe got something on offer and that applies to all aspects of life we don't know what we're getting but then of course we need to know how to say no and it's very easy I don't feel right about this situation that's just me and my feelings 
so I'm not going to pursue it. Thank you very much for the offer. So it's okay to say no without knocking the other person in, into the ground. With it's like when you get um, somebody sharing their religious beliefs on the door. We probably don't want them to do that. And we spend in in the UK, we spend an awful lot of time saying it's very nice that you come here and do this and you get involved in a conversation which you don't want. And the simple answer for me these days is I really respect and understand your point of view. It's different to mine. Please go. That's it. Close the door and get on with my own life. But with sobriety in the rooms, we just look for the wisdom of sobriety. We may have many, well I'm sure there are very many people who have religious beliefs and thank goodness they've got them, thank God they've got them because it's working for them. Don't undermine other people is my suggestion. It just takes too much time and it's not worth it because they don't want to know you in that respect. We don't, they, don't, they don't need teaching and I don't need to be taught by them but I learn who I do want to be taught by. Some of the other uh, writings, loss, death and, ad and addictions were required to find rock bottom and for me an anxiety state two years long, a breakdown and desolation. It took me two years to understand that I was trying to relive a life that had gone by, that um, my career in a partic particular type of work needed to come to an end because it, I relied on alcohol to find oblivion from the truth of what I was up to. It was good. It was teaching ethics, business ethics, in a world which doesn't want them. So I was breaking my head on a brick wall on a regular basis where people would say, yes, we do need to be open, honest, fair dealing and deal with life with integrity, when the whole basis of their work, dealing in finance, had nothing to do with open, honest and willing at all. It was competitive and very, very aggressive in terms of making money. So I was out on a limb and no amount of business ethics would change how they operated because they were there for one purpose. Make a, make a pile of cash, money and do what they want because they've earned it in bonuses. and uh, what a horrible world that is for me, not for them Step 10 seems a way to keep our balance in an extreme world where people are driven to extremes always driven, tutored into finding the X factor some magic which pulls us from the cliff edge to safety or worse, seeking some fleeting moment in time where we are recognised and worthy most who seem to catch the public eye and expose their X factor will often later flounder as normality seems overwhelmingly flat. So if you're a footballer earning 200,000 whatever dollars, pounds or whatever it is per week and you've got to the peak of your career and there's nowhere to go and all you're going to do is the same old, same old behaviour gets out of, it's just a tragedy because there's no balance and fellowship is all about creating, allowing us to create balance in our own living so we can have some serenity, follow the path which we really want to follow, change everything sometimes, and tell the truth of who we are. And in telling the truth on a daily basis, we don't st store up problems for the future. And with all torments endured, to find ourselves free of being noticed, free of being anything but ordinary in an ordinary life, balance being restored daily, in practicing some simple steps, we find ord ordinary living remarkable most of the time. Of course, as we make progress and get older, colour in life becomes richer and more emotional. I found that deeper, more meaningful, more more intense. But it, not intense in the way of craving more of it, just intense feelings in the moment of now, where feelings really count. Of course, as we, yes, emotion, where did that get to? In early days, the colour of life crash in, up and down, and then settling as each day we uncover, or simply d discover our world as it is, and not imagined. So we start to live 
were rocketed into the fourth dimension better known, better known as time so we get back into the moment and now where reality is as colourful as it can be in that moment and how we see it and perceive it so thinking brilliant but it takes time emotional and spiritual, pro spiritual progress subject to current life conditions needs met and wants forgotten yeah, if my basic needs are met roof over my head, enough porridge in the cupboard I'll be alright do my best to participate and then my wants are forgotten but there are lots of wants I have which come, in, come in crashing into my mind I want a better camera, I want a better computer I want to be better able to deal with life uh, those wanting statements have no foundation and no nothing which says how you're going to get there so reality tells me deal with your needs first and if there's a surplus of time money, whatever it is to engage in something new fine and uh, I'm open to that we cannot stand the progress of time physically and many of us find we get natural ageing slowing down our abilities I found that I've had to accept a lot over the last few years with uh, diabetes uh, caused by a virus of, of all things I never thought you could catch well it was it's one of those extraordinary things it's, it's one in a million chance of something like that happening and it happened to me so I have to be grateful for it I guess because it helped me put everything else into context in a strange way Yes, and some of us get a raft of complications and diseases and we don't mind as we say another day above ground is a success we seem to be a happy lot or happy with our lot and it's true we get to an age where we're extraordinarily pleased to still be here and quite surprised given the nature of life which is quite vulnerable and it can be fr we can peg it any time even in our modern societies we're not immune to accidents as I find daily and some days even though we may have had some close calls and brushes with the afterlife we will feel some resentments and anger because we don't hide from our feelings today life is always a balance in the moment of now and one of the most important things for me is don't push away my feelings so if I have an anger or resentment caused by an expectation I can expect it ought to be like this and easy and all the rest of it if it's not easy I can become resentful but hang on a minute step 10 says what's disturbing me are my needs met are things as level as they can be and I'm not going to die today am I unless I make a mistake and don't follow the highway code on my bicycle or whatever so don't push my feelings away experience them and deal with them as they're happening and don't be frightened by it don't be frightened of our feelings because they will come back in great big huge mountains when we first start to get sober and then they become mole hills and we can deal with that in terms of balance it, balancing the good our needs met and then something which is impossible our wants are forgotten and we don't deserve anything in this life that's one of the things I know for sure we may feel we deserve more or we feel we deserve not to be feeling like this but we can deal with it if we know how and those 12 steps of the fellowship have been I was very lucky somebody came up with a management leadership program based on the 12 steps much, it would be much of a surprise to many people who go on leadership programs with a certain organisation because the 12 step program absolutely deals with how to take a lead for yourself get freedom back into your life and make the choices which are going to work for you without challenging what other people are up to because they can just get on with it but if you're in an organisation uh, knowing where you stand and how to deal with it and how to deal with your feelings and deal with the actions necessary for I suppose survival and competition and success and also how to deal with failure because big organisations make big mistakes which we hear about in the news but one success can make the difference always and for me the one success which need, I need to continue is sobriety and then the rest of life can unfold as it may 
with the choices which are open to me based on real life. So that's me for today. I always finish with the serenity prayer, which is in good conscience you can share and meditate about it. The can do, change me and my attitude. The cannot do, I can't change you and your attitudes. But, and I learn the wisdom of the difference daily so that I can make changes which are necessary and then I need to put in the action for things to change. So a very short prayer with a big impact on the whole world if, they, if, if everybody operated in the same way and understood where they were coming from. But the world isn't like that. Some of us are at the starting point of recovery. Some of us realize that every day is a new day in recovery. And no amount of time in the fellowship will overcome a problem today if, it, if it's a big one. But if we have knowledge of how to, based on sobriety, then we may find a path and influence others to follow if it's the right decision. And we can only work that out in the moment of now. We don't automatically know what is right for other people. Really important. And sometimes we don't know what is right for us, so we need in input from others. So all our senses are necessary. Listening, seeing, feeling, tasting, all those. I can't remember all of them. Anyway, I've got them all, to a certain extent, even, even if some of them are damaged. The serenity prayer, universal, this whether you believe in God or not just simply good conscience God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference is in the moment and when I remember just for today